BioWare. There's obviously a lot of concern surrounding this studio. They've put out sort of one failure after another, at least in the eyes of consumers who have played some of their recent games and have walked away dissatisfied. And it worries me when I see BioWare continuously lose some of their staff, some of their key staff, a lot of the veterans that used to keep leaving one after another. Now, it's not always that when a studio staff leaves the studio, it signals the end of the world or, you know, that something's off with the studio. It's not always the case. Sometimes people just leave because they want to find new ventures. But in the case of Bioware, when somebody leaves, it, it tends to signal something. And we have seen before how departures after departures have served as signs that things may not be going well at the studio. I don't know what this departure means for Bioware, but it is worth talking about. So there is a senior producer at Bioware called Fernando Mello, and he is a senior producer for Hashtag Dreadwolf Rises, so that's Dragon Age. On August 16th, 2019, so a few days ago, he confirmed that he is leaving Bioware after 12 years. So let's just check out what he had to say about this situation. He said, quote, Today was my last day at Bioware. After 12 years, that's a heck of a lot of feels. Tonight, I got to write my name up at our local pub, alongside many other amazing peers over the years, and it reminded me of a lot of folks no longer here that I miss dearly. Hmm. Yeah, you're not the only one there. Gamers in particular do miss a lot of the old folks, you know, a lot of the veteran writers and a lot of the leadership that led some of these incredible games that Bioware published back in the golden days. But slowly but surely, it feels like it's becoming out with the old and in with the new. And the new isn't so fantastic from, you know, what we have seen with some of their latest releases. And now Fernando Mello is another veteran who's kind of taking a leave from the studio. He continued, There's really no easy way to sum up all the fantastic experiences and friendships across our studios, our partners, and in our community that I've been so fortunate to have been a part of over these years. Here's my parting email to the studio since it also goes out to all of those I've had the pleasure to work with before and helped to make it a fun and unforgettable ride but couldn't get that email. To be clear, this is my own decision. I've been wanting to take some time to disconnect and explore a couple ideas for next chapter in my career. So what's next? Well, watch this space. So uh, basically, EA didn't come in there and fire him or something like that. Bioware didn't pressure him to leave. Nothing of the sort. He just kind of wanted to try something new, move on to another venture. I don't know if he got burned out at Bioware after all the shenanigans surrounding the studio or if he had planned this for a while. Uh, either way, yeah, they're losing leadership. Dragon Age 4 is losing leadership. And this isn't the first occurrence of something like this happening, which we'll get to in a bit. So here's the email that Fernando sent across the studio. And it reads as follows. As a producer, I write emails all the time to a variety of audiences, sometimes on really challenging topics. I don't think I've ever struggled to figure out how to write an email as much as this one. How does one adequately express appreciation for the ranges of experiences, opportunities, emotions, challenges, and friendships over 12 years at a studio like Bioware and EA in a sort of brief email? Roughly half my professional career in the games industry has been here, and I'll be forever thankful for the opportunity to have contributed in a small way to both Dragon Age and Mass Effect franchises, BOS, web companion apps, analytics, and our community, as well as working with numerous amazing EA first party and external teams and partners over the years. Honestly, to say my time here with all the individuals I had the privilege to work with over the years will hold a special place for me would be an understatement. It is unlikely that anything else will ever be able to match that. But they say all good things must come to an end. For me personally, I've been wanting to take some time to disconnect and figure out what I'd like to focus on as a next chapter, and this seemed as good, least disruptive timing as it would likely get. With a great game leadership team in place, a fantastic creative vision, and some of the best devs in the world, Morrison is well underway to becoming the definitive Dragon Age experience, and I'm incredibly proud and honored to have played a part in that. I'll be eagerly awaiting the opportunity to experience the next Dragon Age as a fan this time around. My last day in the office will be this Friday, August 16th, and as is the custom around these parts, I'll be at uh, classified.
I guess. But uh, yeah, so a couple things to note. Fernando here is pretty confident that Morrison, which is the code name of the next Dragon Age game, is in good hands, that this project is going to be amazing, etc., etc. And that's great, I love the attitude, but I've seen before how BioWare has expressed how amazing a project looks and how great it's going to be when it finally launches, and then for that to fall apart. So uh, when people left BioWare before Mass Effect Andromeda's release, they said the same thing. I can see this game's going to be amazing, the definitive experience, or, you know, they just kind of really hyped it up, and Andromeda turned out to be a disappointment. Same thing with Anthem. Some people left prior to that project, and, you know, they were hyping it up as well, saying, yeah, no, we, we've got a great team here, and we're going to make this amazing. And it's good to have that enthusiasm, but lately I found it difficult to trust BioWare's positivity in terms of where a project is at and what its prospects are like. I don't know what Morrison's going to be like. I'd like to think that uh, his predictions here will come true, that it's going to be an amazing game. But, you know, what I've heard is that, you know, the Kotaku report on Dragon Age... It talked about how Dragon Age 4 got rebooted to be more of a live service style game and how it's using Anthem's like code base to be created. And, you know, Anthem's technology can evolve and it can be better than what Anthem is currently putting up on display. But for me, when I hear that something is associated with Anthem, it makes me worried. But with Anthem, a lot of the struggle was putting the technology together. I guess now with the technology in place, they can maybe use that to really uh, just focus on the game creation rather than the technical elements of the Frostbite engine, which Bioware has consistently struggled with. That's the hope, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. Also interesting is this bit right here where he says that it's a good time to leave, a time that's least disruptive. So perhaps that suggests that Dragon Age 4 or the next Dragon Age is still in its early stages of development, which isn't surprising because, again, the project was rebooted. It's probably still being conceptualized, so maybe it isn't the biggest deal in the world that a senior producer is leaving at this stage. But to me, it's still worrisome to see so many veterans leaving Bioware consistently. It just feels like more and more Bioware staff are burning out, and we're getting a Bioware that is almost irrecognizable. I mean, Casey Hudson's still there, but... Other than him and a couple people, who else is left from the old days when they made amazing games like KOTOR and Baldur's Gate and Mass Effect, you know, the original trilogy, and, you know, the people who worked on the original Dragon Age game, Origins, and it just, it, this does not feel like the same Bioware. And Fernando, for those who don't know, worked on Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2 as senior producer before becoming director of online development in 2011, and then in 2015, he left the role to work on the online portion of Mass Effect Andromeda, and then he was made lead producer of the next Dragon Age game, codenamed Morrison. Yeah, it's just strange. I mean, a lead producer to leave a game right as it's starting to ramp up development or as the conceptualization is starting to come together as the core team has moved into it. I guess they're going to have to find a new lead producer to take over, and I guess we'll see where it all ultimately goes, but... Just stuff like this doesn't... It's never been a good sign before, and I don't see it as a good sign now. And this comes right after Ben Irving left the studio a day prior, on August 15th, 2019. Ben Irving, for those who don't know, he was also a lead producer, specifically on Anthem. And basically, after the core Bioware team finished Anthem and moved on to Dragon Age, he became in charge of the game, and he just up and left all of a sudden, and... This is especially strange because this is during a time period when Anthem really needs a lot of help. Anthem's still not in a great place despite the release of the Cataclysm. And to see at this juncture Ben Irving, the lead, just say goodbye, it just really starts to feel like not everything is well at the studio or that people are burning out and they just want to leave, that uh, people just don't want to be at Bioware anymore because the studio may not be headed in a particularly good direction. It just, that's the vibe that I'm getting. And just to give you a history of stuff like this happening, back in August 2014, Casey Hudson suddenly up and left Bioware and EA, and this was during a time when Andromeda was still coming together, 
and when Anthem was still in its very early stages. And this right here was a sign of things to come. After Andromeda launched, a couple months later, on July 2017, Aaron Flynn, who was the general manager at the studio and who led Mass Effect Andromeda, he up and left, and then Casey Hudson returned. The timing is certainly really interesting, right after a game flopped majorly to the point where EA decided to shut down an entire subdivision of one of their major studios. Right after that is when Aaron Flynn just kind of disappears from Bioware. And then this was definitely a signal that things weren't going so hot. Dragon Age creative director leaves Bioware. This was in October 2017. And Mike Laidlaw, I mean, he is synonymous with Bioware. He's been at the studio for 14 years. He's worked on everything from Mass Effect to Dragon Age. He didn't provide any reasons as to why he left. You know, he talked about how grateful he was for the experience of being at the studio and everything and having worked on these amazing projects and how he wanted to pursue his own ventures, but he didn't provide any reasons. And then we learned in this Kotaku report that there was just some conflicting stuff between Laidlaw and the higher-ups at EA and Bioware. So this portion of the article reads, uh, The Dragon Age 4 overhaul was a sign of Bioware's troubles and how the company has struggled in recent years to work on multiple projects at the same time. It was indicative of the tension between EA's financial goals and what Bioware fans love about the studio's games. It led to the departure of several key staff, including veteran Dragon Age creative director Mike Laidlaw. And it led to today's Dragon Age 4, whose developers hope to carefully straddle the line between storytelling and the live service that EA has pushed so hard over the past few years. And then it says right here, it's not clear how much of Joplin's vision, and Joplin is the previous iteration of Dragon Age before the project was rebooted, it is not clear how much of Joplin's vision will shape Morrison, at least some of it will, says one person on the game, but shortly after the reboot creative director Mike Laidlaw left, as did some other veteran Dragon Age staff. Matt Goldman, art director on Dragon Age Inquisition, and then Joplin took over as creative director for Morrison, while Dara remained executive producer on both that project and Anthem. So, yeah, there's clear signs here that sometimes... When we see studio departures, regardless of what the Bioware staff who left might claim about how grateful they are for having worked at the studio and how they're leaving to you know pursue their own thing, it could have additional implications that are not being made readily apparent because they don't want to give off the sense that there is trouble at the studio when there might be, which is why when I see this, you know, the lead producer of Next Dragon Age game leaves Bioware, right after Ben Irving, the lead producer on Anthem, leaves the studio, I'm thinking something's up. What is up this time? Who knows? Maybe we'll see it in another investigative report down the line. And then uh, this is uh, an example of what happened back in November 2017. This was months after Andromeda's launch and not long before Anthem's launch. Anthem lead animator left Bioware after 17 years. So a lot of these people, you know, they've been at the studio for over a decade, and this guy close to two decades. It's these kind of people who are leaving, the veterans, and that's what's particularly worrying, the old timers, the guys who shaped Bioware. Drew Kropashin left Bioware back in March 2018. So this was a year out from Anthem's launch. And it reads right here, Influential Bioware writer Drew Kropashin has left Bioware for a second time. He's leaving to pursue personal projects and to work with 21st Century Fox's expanding gaming division Foxnext and new studio Fogbank Entertainment. So he said in his website, I know a lot of you are wondering why I'm doing this. For many people, working at Bioware would be their dream job and they can't imagine anyone stepping away from it but it was time for me to move on. Everyone who works at Bioware pours their heart and soul into the games they're making. It's creatively demanding and at times exhausting. Yeah, again, signals of burnout. In the past, I've managed to juggle outside projects with my work at Bioware, but it always took a toll. And there were always outside projects I had to pass on because they would represent a conflict of interest with Bioware or EA properties. And so he made the decision to freelance. Basically, he just wants to open up his creative ventures. James Olin left Bioware on July 23rd, 2018. He's a 22-year-old veteran at the studio, and he's made renowned games like Baldur's Gate, KOTOR, 
Star Wars The Old Republic. So he's been a part of Bioware for over two decades, and he wanted to step away from the studio. Again, it feels like Bioware is just not as great of a place to work in as it once used to be from, I don't know, a creative standpoint, from a logistics standpoint, from a livelihood standpoint, whatever it is. And we have heard time and again about how a lot of the trouble development with Bioware games has to do with poor management, with poor working conditions, and with recent backlash against Bioware from the gaming community, people who were disappointed with Andromeda and now with Anthem, and just the negative reputation Bioware has right now, it's becoming an even less appealing place to work in, I feel. And I think that may be a contributor to veterans who are saying, okay, I got to do other stuff. I can't stay here any longer. It's time to pursue my own thing. So that's sort of where we're currently at right now. I don't know how to feel about Bioware anymore. I just don't think there's much hope for the studio. I mean, I've said before how, you know, after Andromeda failed, I said, okay, well, that was the B team. We've got Edmonton working on Anthem. And my disposition towards what the future holds for Bioware will be decided by Anthem. That's what I said way back when. After Anthem launched, I'm like, okay, yeah, Bioware is no more. The Bioware I loved is no more because this is not how they used to function in the past. They never used to release games like that. It just with lacking in substance. Like, I remember when Mass Effect launched, and that game, technically, it has not aged very well. It was a pretty buggy game, but it was compelling. You played it, and you loved it because of the world and the storytelling and all of these different things, all of these elements that felt fully fleshed out. There was a soul there, even if sort of the exterior, the painting was kind of rough. Anthem is the complete opposite. You know, they kind of painted the walls and made it look all shiny, but its foundation, its core, its structure is rotting. It's a complete mess. It's just uh, incredibly poorly constructed. Yeah, it's just, it's readily apparent that their standards have fallen, and maybe this is something that the veterans are feeling as well. This could be why the veterans no longer feel like they have much of a creatively fulfilling future at BioWare, despite how grateful they are about all these years that they spent at the studio, maybe so many people are moving on because it's starting to feel more and more like Bioware is turning into a shell, just kind of a husk from a creative standpoint. I don't know. Here's hoping I'm wrong and that Fernando is right. Here's hoping that Morrison really turns out to be the definitive Dragon Age experience. But I'm not hopeful anymore. Bioware, they lost me a long time ago. And I'm going to approach everything they do henceforth with the utmost caution, especially with them being under EA's umbrella and with Dragon Age being this live service centric game, this game that was rebooted just to make it more live servicey. That does not spell good tidings, does it? Anyway, there you have it, folks. Just uh, wanted to point this out. I felt it was important for people to know that more departures are still going on at BioWare. A lot of these are lead producers, veterans. And I'm thinking, you know, as much as I'd like to think, maybe it's nothing. It's just people making changes in their lives. It doesn't affect the project. As much as I'd like to think these things, given BioWare's history, I find that hard to believe in this case. Though, you know, only time will tell. Let us know in the comments below what you think about Fernando's departure shortly after Ben's departure. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.